said, uh, uh, you think the Laramie Plains is such a great place for raising sheep, here so we can raise. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were, at one time, we had uh, over 50,000 head of sheep running out here on the Laramie Plains. And uh, he was also very instrumental, one of his partners from driving sheep through from the uh, uh, West Coast in uh, 1881. This partner of his brought uh, 23,000 weathers in from Oregon, drove them through in three bands. And uh, so they were very instrumental in moving sheep from the West Coast to points in the Middle West. Well, that's about enough on the horns, I think. Of course, you've heard of ours. Well, this is a medal that they gave at the fifth, uh, Harry Reels, incidentally, on this room. Harry Reels and I put this together back, well, I suppose, 20, I think about the first year I retired. I've been retired 21 years, 1st of June. So it was about that time, and Henry was, or Harry was uh, president of the uh, museum board at that time. And we uh, put this room together at there. And uh, this is a metal of, uh, or a watch fob that uh, Harry brought up and uh, they had it in his family. And that was in uh, 1909, the fifth annual uh, convention. And they commanded uh, Candish, who was supposed, to, at Rollins, who was supposed to do it for, for sheep wearing. And I'm tracing this back. And this is the only one I've ever seen <coughs> of all the sheep families I worked with in 40 years. I, I never saw this metal turn up anywhere else. And all the sheep uh, uh, members of the Wyoming Glow Grower Association would have gotten one back in 1909. And Harry said that his family goes back to Frank King, over here, that's the one on this side by the cowbell. That's the older brother of the King family. He uh, had a second family, and Harry Reels's uh, wife uh, comes from the second family of Franks after he moved to Cheyenne. <coughs> and this was in some of their coming. So we, ever Harry and I, thought that this probably belonged at one time to Frank King. Now the pictures up here, we tried to gather them as to uh, shearing and the herder taking care of the wool handlers down here. And uh, starting up here in this corner, our pictures, uh, now Dave uh, Cook gave these pictures to me from Old War and Livestock Files. I had copies made. But up here, this is the blade crew, just shearing out there on the uh, of the ground and the gravel. And the thing that appeals to me about most pictures is how small those sheep were. You see them down there, the shears have hold of them. And those, the shoulders on those sheep don't even come up to their knees, which means they were only about that long. And they would have had to have been, I imagine that's a bunch of yearly ewes, but they would have had to have been at least a year old, or they wouldn't have had at least a shear. So uh, a little view that big was, uh, uh, that's phenomenal. And uh, there's a story in the Cheyenne paper that Senator Warren met a drove of uh, California fine wool ewes coming through from California. He met them out on the Sweetwater. That was in 1881, I believe. I was not too sure of these dates, but uh, he met them or had somebody meet them on the Sweetwater and buy those ewes before they could get to Laramie where there were more barters around and, uh, or Cheyenne. And uh, so that was the beginning of the Warren Livestock Company sheep was those uh, little uh, Mexican ewes that came from California. But you can see out there those, uh, how very, very small those sheep are. Well, there in the corner under the sheep herder, of course, that's uh, uh, that picture there, the sheep herder lying in the wagon of the sheep out through the window in the moonlight. Uh, 
that's a classic that has gone all over the world. And uh, that's one of the great pictures of sheep and all that. But now the little herder up here with all the clothes on, all the equipment. Dave said that uh, the first summer, this, uh, they called him Little Indian. In fact, they named one of their lambing camps after him. It's a little Indian camp. <coughs> but uh, Dave said he came to work for him as a, just a young fellow. And uh, that first spring he worked for him, he left the wagon. Nice sunshiny day, just real warm. He left the wagon without even a coat on. Took the sheep uh, out there out a mile or two from the wagon. <coughs> when one of these spring blizzards hit, and of course the sheep were drifting away from the wagon. And instead of going back to the wagon where it was warm, he could get some clothes, he stayed to the sheep. And they found him two days later. <laughs> yeah, they had a thing to eat. Didn't have to even have a coat on. He could sleep it out in the snow for uh, two days and a night. And uh, Dave said he was just about frozen when they got him and kind of warmed up. So Dave said he worked for him for 30 years after that, but he never left the wagon. Any, any day of the year or any hour of the day, he never left the wagon <laughs> without all that equipment on. <laughs> it didn't take him long to learn. <laughs> you see, he's got a heavy coat on. He's got a skillet, and lots of water back there, some food and stuff. And that's the way. He, every time he left the wagon, he always left it out. <laughs> <coughs> this is a uh, picture that Harry brought down. That's the Larry Boomerang account of the sheep and cattle war uh, here in 1904, 1906. Anyway, it happened. Uh, 22 miles southwest of Laramie, or southeast of Laramie. So I'd be close to the 287 going to uh, Cheyenne, that's right at the end of Boulder Ridge. And uh, the uh, sheep were legitimate. They rented the uh, house from Mrs. Uh, well, who was a veterinarian that used to be here at a big uh, sheep ranch in color, or, uh, Angus Ranch in Colorado now. Not Carol. Huh? Not Carol. No. No. It was, uh, anyway, uh, uh, she was a widow lady, and that was his mother, the spider mother. wife. And uh, these people rented at least the land from her to run the sheep on that summer. But uh, uh, there were, the cattlemen, of course, were opposed to sheep coming into the country, and I can't understand why, because sheep have been coming into this country and moving through that area all during the uh, 80s and early 90s, the latter part of the 70s. They've been, uh, Colonel Wentworth estimates that 15 million head of sheep were driven through from California, like these up here, and uh, big wetters, two and three year old wetters from uh, Oregon and Washington. And as near as I can figure out, uh, out of that 15 million head, at least three fourths of them came right through Laramie here. They came cut off before they got to Casper, came up through uh, the hole and into the Laramie Plains, and came to Laramie where they were split up and went to different areas from Laramie. Some went to wheat fields in uh, Kansas, some of them went to uh, feedlots in. Uh, California, or in uh, Greeley, Fort Collins. Some of them are moved to feedlots in the Middle West. Some of them moved directly to slaughter here. But they came to Laramie and were split up in one different areas here. So these people at Calvin should have been used to seeing sheep. Sheep moved through here for 30 years, you know. But uh, when uh, they leased this land out here, Four of them came in one night, they were just moving them into the land. And as I say, the sheep were legitimate because they leased the land. Uh, but there were, I think, three wagons. There were two wagons with herders in them, and one with, uh, that had the, uh, the super, or the uh, boss uh, who was going with them. And uh, they uh, came in at night, there were four of them. They, uh, 
brought the herders out and tied them to a barbed wire fence out there by the wagons and then burned the wagons and all the contents and I think they burned the dogs, tied the dogs up to the wagons and burned them. And uh, then they uh, <coughs> destroyed two wagons. <coughs> then they got the foreman. He was down close to town. He just followed them up. They tied him up and burned his wagon. And uh, then they cut to death uh, 200, 250 head of sheep. See, they, they had baseball bats with them for clubs, and they uh, clubbed the, the sheep to death. Uh, 200, 250 head, and I guess he just got tired of swinging and finally quit on that amount. But anyway, the foreman uh, got loose from the fence and walked into tie siding and uh, uh, got on the train and came into Laramie and reported to the sheriff and so forth. And he knew the uh, who the four men were because, uh, well, they all had handkerchiefs over their faces, but. Uh, he knew their shafts and their uh, spurs and their hats and their horses, he knew their voices. He knew who all four of them were. And uh, they uh, brought them to trial. And uh, of course, as it said in the paper, it was a uh, cowman jury, so they didn't uh, convict them. They turned them loose for lack of evidence because it, even though he could identify them by their hats and their shafts and their horses and so forth. Well, <laughs> there wasn't any evidence. But Joe King told me uh, a story. Joe's the one on the far left over there. And I got to know Joe. He was, uh, see, I came out here in the fall of 46, and Joe died in 49. And uh, Joe was interested in what I was doing, working with the judging kings and with the sheep. And he spent quite a little time. And uh, I, uh, he told me a story <coughs> about the time they kept all the sheep men in jail down here for about a week. And I, looking back on it, he didn't say it, but looking back on it, I would say it was probably that time of the trial when they had those uh, cattlemen up to uh, uh, trial. That. And uh, he said they kept the sheep men in. Joe seemed to think it was kind of a joke, yeah, and he thought it was kind of funny. I don't know if he thought it was funny 40 years before or not, but anyway, uh, they put all the sheep men in jail and keep them there overnight. Then they'd turn them loose in the daytime, and the women would come in and bring fried chicken and uh, baked beans and potato salad, and they'd have a picnic in the park every day. Then they'd lock them up again that night. And I would imagine that's why the trial was going on. What, you, what year is that? What? What, what time is, what date is that? That was 1904 or 1906. Can you read it? 1904. Right. Yeah. And that was the only major, there was, over the years, a lot of uh, sheep and cattle fracases and deals. That was the only major actual sheep and cattle war in that year, 1904. And uh, they, uh, they say Joe said that they were locked up in jail at night for about a week. And uh, I imagine it was, they were afraid that the sheep men might go out and retaliate. So, so this Joe King was one of them locked up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he didn't seem to be particularly perturbed about that at the time, because that was 40 years later. Then there weren't any, uh, they didn't kill any of the king sheep or anything like that, so he wasn't particularly concerned about it. I guess that was the law's way of trying to prevent more violence, I think. Yeah, that's not the, uh, I wouldn't know, just looking back on it, I think that's what happened probably, that they just locked the sheepmen up so they wouldn't go out and, and uh, burn down the hay stacks yeah, or the buildings or the cattle on Best thing I could do is so I could think of something else to do. <laughs> but, uh, that's, uh, that's about all we can do there, I think. These uh, are brands. Well, the sheep brands, you know, are not permanent brands. They just dip them in paint and put them on the back of the sheep. This is a, one of Dick Strong's brands here, U-A-G-S. This is a brand, I think this is the uh, uh, state brand that they put, I used to uh, many years ago when they brought in 
sheep into Wyoming. They had to be inspected. Of course, rabies was rampant then. Mm -hmm. They're not rabies, but scabies. And uh, this is the uh, official brand that they would put on to show that the that band had been inspected. And you want whatever that meant. And of course, that is down there is the uh, just a uh, thing to keep the blade sharp. By the blades, the hand blades, like these old fellows are using up here, they had to be remarkably sharp to uh, pull it out. The war for too much hand work on it. Yeah, that's, that's terrible. Any questions about that now? I should.